Hey everyone, Church of SDFU. So behind me you can see my multi-million dollar chroma key setup, which is not working optimally at the moment. Unfortunately the video software I'm using uh, has a somewhat too conservative algorithm for chroma keying, and that green just doesn't seem to be quite uh, even enough. Um, <clears throat> but today I want to talk about problems and their solutions. Specifically, I think the only thing worse than a nigh unsolvable terrible problem is a solution that makes the problem worse. And really that's quite quite obvious, but I want to make that concrete by some examples. And the first will be rather more humorous because they come from crack.com. If I remember, I'll put the article up in the links. And I didn't do the background check on this, so I'm assuming the article is accurate um, in what it talks about. If it's not, I apologize. But, I mean, I can easily imagine things like this going on. And crack.com, usually their articles try to verify their facts, even though they're a humorous website. So this article is about six dumbest things schools are doing in the name of safety. And so I just want to go through a couple of them briefly. So schools are forcing students to wear electronic tracking devices, including putting uh, uh, tracking bracelets on children who are truants. Um, they're, they're banning they're banning all touch amongst students, so students can't touch each other, which was because some student kicked another student, and now apparently they decided that they're going to turn all of their students into um, into well, I guess you can't turn children into autistic um, persons, but uh, forbidding human touch really. Um, and they're also doing fantastic stuff like banning all photography, um, banning all outside food from being taken to the school, forcing children that violate the dress code to wear what is described in the article as prison jumpsuits, but it looks more to me, at least that one <laughs> looks like something out of North Korea. Um, and deterring bad behavior by issuing uh, fines of hundreds of dollars to students that misbehave. Now, I think that a lot of these are examples of a real and serious problem that exists and a terrible solution that is bound to make the problem worse. Um, or at least, in the very least, completely ignores the problem and therefore stops us from finding a solution. Take the truancy issue. So you put an ankle bracelet on the kids so you can find them. I mean, probably this won't happen because the cops don't have all day to go chasing after kids. That would be enormously expensive. But even if they did, what would happen? Maybe you could drag the kid into the classroom. You think he's going to learn anything in the classroom? You think he's going to pick up anything after he's been dragged by police physically to be there? Maybe he'll even make it a sport. After all, his patience in playing hide and seek with the police is probably a lot, uh, a lot larger than that of police. And in the end, they can't do anything else, and they can't put him in a school dungeon yet. So stupid. As for banning all touching because someone kicked someone else, well, I don't even need to talk about that. But the other one was the idea of fines. So students would be issued hundreds of dollars of fines for violations of the school code. I assume like causing a ruckus in the classroom. And they would be taken in front of a judge. An actual judge. And this would all be handled by the police. Um, and they've done this to children as young as six. Now the fantastic thing here is that... Um, that means that they're coming into contact with law and order. And basically, one of the biggest threats that our society has, the threat of being uh, dragged in front of a judge and, you know, feeling like you've been, like you've had your social status or your, your pride hurt by being dragged in front of that judge, gone. They're used to it. We're, we're basically inoculating these children against the threat of police and the justice system catching up with them. Once they are out of school, they'll be perfectly prepared to have that not affect them at all. Um, 
which is in insane. Terrible solutions to real problems, but the actual solutions would be a lot harder. How do you make that truant kid show up to school and want to learn? Hard problem. Hard, very hard problem. I mean, it's got societal implications. What about the family? You probably need some act additional assistance outside of class. All things that cost money and a lot of effort and might cause controversy if we address them. So what do we do? We put an ankle bracelet on him. Brilliant. That's just genius. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about that's not so funny is the suggestion that London rioters that get caught have basically if they're on council housing, so the housing that is subsidized or paid for entirely by the state, they will get evicted and they will have their benefits cut. What exactly is the thinking behind that? So we have young people, mostly young poor people, because obviously a, a young rich person, there were some such rioters, you can't remove them from council housing or evict them because they're paying rent. No, we're targeting the poor people who, for whatever reason, don't have any other options. So you're going to kick them out of their place where they live, take away their money, so they're going to be homeless, they're not going to have access to hygienic facilities or anything like that, they're not going to have a place to store their stuff, um, and they're not going to have uh, the usual things like a telephone probably that people in today's society need to do something like get a job. So if this uh, if this okay maybe it's probably not kids because kids would still be living with their parents but let's say it's an, an adolescent or a young adult 18 19 20 living in this council flat maybe by 25 he'd turn around his life probably not since we're not doing shit for him but maybe he would what's he gonna do once he hits the streets what's he gonna do without any money to buy food you think he's gonna he's gonna go Oh, that's right. I messed up. I deserve this. I need to turn my life around. I need to turn to Jesus. Of course not. He's going to take whatever means he can to make a life for himself. And probably the skills that he has at that point are mainly criminal skills. And if he doesn't have them yet, he can acquire those readily. Whereas the skills to fit into the actual economy are much harder to acquire and probably since he now doesn't have a house to reside at, he is a uh, person with no fixed address, he probably doesn't have any of those options available to him anymore. What a brilliant idea. And there's something else which makes this all the worse. So Cameron is, before he got elected, he was talking about how British society was breaking down. And he's making some noises to this effect. But still largely it's, it's talk of senseless violence, of young thugs. Well, let me just translate some of this German article. Um, you know what kind of stuff David Cameron got up to right after he got elected? Well, he uh, cut subsidies uh, to pay for schooling for disadvantaged children. He cut money for youth centers in disadvantaged communities. You know, the kind of youth center that a kid that is bored all day could go to and do something productive that would keep him out of trouble or her out of trouble. Closed. No more funding. He closed libraries all over the country. A single district had five libraries closed. So you're a kid who maybe you're on the wrong path, maybe you have the wrong friends, but you have a good heart. What are you gonna do? Where are you gonna go? You know what else he closed? You know what else he cut funds for? Job agencies. Uh, assisting the unemployed. So if you're unemployed, thanks to David Cameron, there will now be no one there to help try to get you back in the workforce. You know how much he's cut out of uh, Tottenham? 75% of the money that went to the youth services will be cut in the next three years. Obviously it's already being cut. So we have this problem 
of disillusioned youth turning increasingly to violence and crime like has been happening in England. England is a perfect example. It is true that violence, 60% of children under the age of between 10 and 15 are a violent, uh, are a victim of a crime in England. Between the age of 10 and 15, 60% of children. And also, um, 3.4 million children in a country of uh, 21 million children, 3.4 million are under the poverty line. So you have impoverished children that are having crimes committed against them, that are having all their services cut. And once they grow up, they are having those services cut that were catered to trying to get them into the workforce. Then, they don't turn out so great. And when they don't, you take away their basis of existence. Um, which was really the only thing that could have possibly enabled them unless they manage to find some kind of charity that now gives them a home to make any kind of living. Because if you've talked to people on the street, one of their huge problems is once you don't have a house, once you don't have a place to stay, daily tasks like having a shower, like communicating with people, become insanely difficult logistically if you don't have any fixed place where you stay. So these people, if they do evict them, and I, I don't think this is, uh, this is um, law yet, but they're considering it seriously. They are basically guaranteeing that these people will stay in the position that they're now in. And I'm not saying that all or most will manage to find their way out of the situation that they're in right now, where they are unproductive, um, not just um, but counterproductive members of society. Um, but some might. And as for the benefit, I don't know, where I guess the threat, so next time we'll tell those looters don't loot because, you know, we we know how well threats work. We've tried the hard punishment. And that's that's my point with this entire video. This idea that we have this complex problem. It's poverty. It's a, it's a consumer society where people are, where there's such a discrepancy that pe some people cannot fulfill the demands of that society in order to make themselves feel like respected members of that society, we have parental issues, uh, we have, and of, obviously all those economic issues have to do with the world economy as well. It's a hugely complex issue. And of course the government doesn't want to do, deal with that at all. So what do they do? They reach for, they reach for the big stick. They're gonna bash everything. Because that's the easiest solution. And that's something that you can stir up a good bit of populism for every, every day of the year. And it's very sad because these are, these are the solutions that will break things worse. In the long run, this solution will undermine even more the already rotten foundations of British society. But you know, don't don't take my word for it. Just wait. Just wait and see if if this amazing law and order approach uh, bears fruit for England. If if cutting services out underneath poor people is going to uh, encourage them to become productive members of society. I know that's what some people like to think. We just need to, you know, poor people. They're somehow a lesser class of people. There's something vaguely. You know, it's they have that whiff of failure and, and inferiority about them. If we can just put enough pressure on them, they'll get somewhere. Let's see if that works out. My personal feeling is it's not going to work out. And if I seem a little bit angry, it is because I am angry. I'm angry at people who 
because these politicians, they know better. They're not idiots. And I'm not saying the people that support this are idiots. They're just people that aren't thinking enough about this particular topic. They probably have plenty of other things to think about in their everyday life. So they just follow their gut on this. The politicians, they're paid to think about this. And they do think about this. But they don't care. They understand this won't work. But they don't care because they understand it'll win them votes. <sighs> And these are the politicians like David Cameron that were bemoaning, a conservative bemoaning how society is falling apart. And what's the solution? To take away all of the things that try to bind the society, like community centers. To pull out all of the support. Church of SDFU, I will see you guys all later. As for England, as for David Cameron, uh, yeah, well, maybe, you know, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't have any hope for politicians whatsoever. There are so few that I have even an ounce of respect for. Um, out of both sides of their mouth at every second. <laughs>